What is it? A security, a commodity, a currency, what? It's a commodity. And if you look at the definition of a security, by definition, it has a liability attached to it. Take a, a dollar bill, it has a liability to the U.S. government. Commodities do not have liabilities. They're bearer assets. And when you think about it in that context, um, you look at Bitcoin, it's not much different than gold. I don't see why there's all this hostility towards it, because it fits the same mold as many of the other commodities. Remember, it's even mined. Now, the pushback <laughs> I would have against uh, Bitcoin really has to do with its liquidity. Um, I checked the numbers this morning. Even at $10,000 or $11,000, it's a $168 billion market cap. You look at gold, it has $8.3 trillion of gold above ground. Wow. That's real liquidity. And that lack of liquidity is what's creating that volatility that has everybody concerned about uh, Bitcoin. But I think bottom line, the, the real um, benefit of Bitcoin is the blockchain technology. Not the Bitcoin that sits in the blockchain, but the blockchain itself. And you can take gold, and take BitGold, and put it inside that blockchain and treat it just like Bitcoin. So the real innovation here is in the ledger, in the blockchain, not in the Bitcoin itself. And it, I must say, everyone says Bitcoin, uh, blockchain is valuable. That's yep. going to be something. But coming back to Bitcoin for a minute, isn't there another difference with gold? You don't see gold shooting up 65% in, in 30 days. Right. And so how valuable a commodity is it? because what goes up can come down. Yeah, but let's go back to that liquidity point. 168 billion in Bitcoin versus 8.3 trillion in gold. Given that level of liquidity in the size of the market in gold, it'll never have the same volatility as Bitcoin. Now, if you give Bitcoin decades to grow and it becomes as big as gold, which I'm not even going to try to forecast that being a case, but then the volatility would come down. So it's a relatively nascent market with not much liquidity. I mean, we were talking about earlier about EVs and cobalt and lithium, and these are really tiny markets. And you have that EV story taking place. These things have rocketed up by factors of two, factors of three, because they're small markets without liquidity, and then you throw a lot of demand on top of it. But there's a limited amount of cobalt in the world. Right. Uh, when you come to Bitcoin, are we confident that it will take as long for Bitcoin to grow into something that is a really a big mar uh, liquid market as it has been for other things? Because this uh, digital is proceeding at a breakneck pace we have never seen before. Right. In, in fact, actually, on this whole point about you know lithium or, or cobalt, you know we we searched all the commodities throughout history, and we found that U.S. natural gas in 1910 is the only thing that's ever grown by a factor of four in 10 years. So your, your well, point, it's pretty <laughs> rare to see any right. of these markets grow with that supply, creating more liquidity going forward. And by the way, Bitcoin will struggle too, because again, it goes back at the mining process is difficult, and let's not forget it's energy intensive as well.